Isaiah chapter 53. Glory to God. Glory. Isaiah chapter 53. Glory to God. God is an awesome God. Yes. I'm saying he's an awesome God. Yes. I said he's an awesome God. Yes. No matter what we have to deal with today, he is an awesome, awesome, awesome God. Praise Amen. God. Let me get this for you right quick, and then we're gonna we're gonna leave this place. Glory to God. Glory, Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Again, there is so much in this Bible that talks about our redemptive plan in Christ Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Woo! I don't know where to get started. Are y'all ready? Yes. Praise God. Before we leave this earth, I do believe without doubt in my mind that those that are ready to prepare to meet him will have the full knowledge of God. You today, as people of God, today, understand, amen, not just being a ceremony or a, a regular service, but there is a deep embedded message to the world today. When we talk about for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and who's old believing him should not perish and have everlasting life, there was a cost for you to have life today. That's right. There was a price paid for you to have life today. Yes. Yes. And I don't take that very lightly. I don't take that lightly because basically when you think about the crucifixion of Christ, even the movie, what was the name of that movie? Yes. The Passion of Christ. That, that, that was close. Yes. But that don't even give anywhere near what Christ really went through and suffered for your sake. When you think about that thorn that was put a place on his head, it was an inch and a half deep into his head. When you think about the spikes that was in his hand and in his feet, there was torment. Yes, yes. And he did it all for you just because we needed a cover. Yes. Glory to God. Glory. And in Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 4, read, I want you to read that for me in the King James and read it down the fight as well. Because I think we really need to know what, what the atonement is, what God did for us from the beginning. Amen? Amen. Isaiah 53, verse 4 reads, Surely he mm -hmm. has borne our griefs. Surely he has carried or borne our griefs. And carried our sorrows. And he carried our sorrows. Yes. Yes. We did esteem him pretty. Yes. Smitten Yes. And afflicted. Yes. yes. Okay? Now, I'll, just that part right there, uh, uh, when you think about that part in the Amplified Virgin, you think about, well, why in the world uh, did God have to do that? And I'm almost through. I'm almost finished. Tell Maya she got to get this copy, too. I'm almost finished. But I'm going to keep my coat up. Are you with me? You think about the plan of God from the beginning. When God created man, and breathe in man's nostrils, and man become a living soul. Hallelujah, Jesus. He become a small G God on earth. That's right. If you think about what Leviticus said, life of the blood, what did that say about? The life, it said the blood. Now, like Leviticus chapter 17 and verse 11, what did that say? I think it's 17 and 11. Glory to God. I feel the Holy Spirit right now. Anybody got that right quick? Think of Leviticus 17 and 14. If I'm not mistaken. Look. Say it. For it is the life uh -huh. of all flesh, mm -hmm. and the blood of it is the life thereof. Okay. Is that what version is that? That's me, Okay. So the life of all flesh is in the blood. That's what I want to say. Life, I'm say life, life of all flesh all is in the blood. Yeah. Say it one more time. Life, life. of all flesh all is in the blood. Yeah. See, blood itself is not life. Life is in the blood. Yeah. Okay? And when you look at that, God sent Jesus as a life in his blood to your flesh. Let me, let, me, let me back up because I don't want to lose you. I don't want to lose you. When you start talking about the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, it is a life that's in that blood, which is God transforming himself into Jesus to reference himself into blood to bring life to you. 
Are you with me? So then if life of the flesh is in the blood, the blood carries God in it. And Jesus <laughs> is God in the flesh. Amen. Through the blood. Yes. So we needed a covering. Yes. We needed a covering. Yes. When sin appeared in touch of them, we're going to get to the best of this. We're we, we going to do this. We're going to wear it out, Pastor Thomas. Because basically, when we understand this concept of what God has done, it's a deeper meaning uh, than what we celebrate to commercialize Easter. It's a deeper meaning of what God has done, what God created. Again, life of the flesh is in the blood. So if you take blood, when, it, when you go for your examination, and you look at that blood in that tomb, that tomb. So in that blood, praise God, hallelujah, Jesus. There's life inside that. Not the blood itself, but life dwells where? In the blood. And the blood is a covering for life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Okay. Let me, let me read a little bit like that. This is, what, this is why the atonement came from. Where the Bible says, this is why it's important. Where, where sin abound, grace doeth much more abound. For the grace of the blood of Jesus covers. It, come on, say covers. See, when your sin was exposed, when sin becomes exposed, it needs to be. <laughs> when Adam sinned in the garden, I'm going to get to it in a minute. When Adam sinned in the garden, Jesus, God came down and said, Adam, where art thou? God knew where he was geographically. He wanted to make sure that Adam knew where he was spiritually. And the Bible says Adam spoke back to him and told him that I, he asked about the thing. I, we were naked and I covered myself. God said, who told you you were naked? Sin revealed. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let him knew that he was naked. So the fig tree represented a cover. To cover up his nakedness. Are, are y'all with me? Bro, this needs to be a Bible study. So in the midst of that, a covering, even the Roman soldiers, and I'm going to get back to that in a minute. When they took Jesus down, the Bible said they covered him in linen. That's right. Linen cloth. That represented they made a covering for sin. The Bible said that in the book of Leviticus, over there when, when the Bible said in Exodus, he said, God said, when I see the blood, all these symbols, these symbols and uh, metaphors that was the Old Testament that was bringing forth into the New Testament. God said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over. That's why it was a Passover when they crucified Jesus. 50 days before Pentecost. But back there was the blood of bulls and doves and all kind of animal blood. But God even recognized that as a symbol of what was going to take place in the New Testament. So God took himself and made blood and put Jesus in the blood. Glory to God. Come down to earth. And when Jesus died on the cross, we didn't have to have lamb's blood. He sprinkled his own blood. And when God sees the blood, that's why he's the only mediator between God and man, the Lord Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So then when sin comes, we need a covering. Why? Because God cannot look at sin. He turned his back on sin. The Bible said, he that knew no sin became sin. Hebrews, well, I'm, I'm going to get back to this one. Hebrews chapter 4, come on right quick. Are y'all with me here? I'm almost done. Glory to God. To understand why this thing had to happen. In other words, Pastor Quan's blood had to be shed. But in the midst, while we're, while we're looking at the blood, but it was what was in that blood. <laughs> what was in that blood. In other words, Pastor, Christ was in his own blood. Because life of the flesh is in the blood. So the blood that came out of him, all of him, 
do. He was in that blood to bring life. Jesus. Am I talking to a lot? 